burning cash. All of Canada's airlines have been struggling mightily since the lockdowns uh, just almost a year ago, and yet still missing in action any real form of government support for this sector, certainly compared to other countries. Now, new restrictions on where they will fly are putting them at a new disadvantage. Peter St. Ange is with us now from the Montreal Economic Institute. Uh, Peter, uh, we know that the airlines, Canadian airlines, uh, those that do fly to sun destinations, voluntarily suspended their flights during a pretty important spring period. Uh, and yet, I actually couldn't even believe this was true. I went and double-checked it on Expedia. Uh, you can still book a flight to anywhere you want in the Caribbean from Toronto today. You just have to fly on, Amer on an American carrier. Uh, what is going on here that we've allowed that kind of disparity to, to happen in the marketplace? That's what's uh, really a bit surprising here. Uh, usually countries preferentially protect their own uh, airline industries. Uh, in this particular case, that's right. People can fly through the U.S. They can go down to the Caribbean, enjoy their vacations. Uh, Canadian operators are shut out of this. And of course, Canadian operators, as, as the previous segment just noted, uh, they're in dire financial straits. So we have been talking for months and months and months about some form of support for this sector. And I think, uh, I don't know, I'm speculating. I think the industry would say the response they were getting from government very early on was, well, you have a lot of cash. And we saw it. Air Canada had cash on its balance sheet. It's burned through the cash. And the question that the airlines were saying was, do we have to be broke before you're going to help us out? What is the, that fine line between helping a business that, that does have cash sitting there and actually keeping a business healthy and viable when this is over. Right, so you've got sort of two uh, aspects to that. One of them is sort of the moral question, right? So if government takes uh, your backyard to build a road, they compensate you, right? This is eminent domain, this is a longstanding legal principle, and so you could argue that if regulatory restrictions are basically crashing the industry, then it's moral that they be compensated for that. Uh, by the way, when the government takes your backyard, they don't lend you the money for the backyard, they pay it to you. Uh, so that's sort of on the mm -hmm. moral side. And then just on the practical side, uh, you know, people have the idea that airlines are swimming in money. Uh, they look like big companies. They have, you know, they spend a lot of money on branding. They seem large, but sort of the background here is that airlines, since the beginning of air travel, right, if you take the aggregate profits of the airline industry worldwide, it has lost money. It is an extremely razor thin industry. Uh, Canadian Airlines make about $7 uh, per ticket in profit. It, it is very, very small amount that, uh, that the industry can actually keep as profit. That means that the industry is always sort of on a knife's edge. They're always teetering a little bit close to the edge. If they burn through these cash reserves, it, it, we, we may end up with an industry that's essentially walking dead. That's, that's basically a zombie industry. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier, if American carriers are still bringing Canadians to and fro, uh, <laughs> you know, this, is, this puts Canadian operators an extreme disadvantage. So just make the distinction here, uh, because there have been various forms of support. We should be clear that the airlines, I know, uh, have availed themselves of, for instance, the wage subsidy. Uh, there are other forms of support that they have tapped. They haven't tapped anything uh, meaningful or, or, more importantly, specific to them. Uh, and, and that large employment uh, financing facility, uh, very few businesses have wanted, right, Peter, because it's so onerous in terms of the, the uh, demands and the ownership by government. What should come their way? Is it a loan? Is it a straight up grant? What do you think the government should be considering about this sector right now? Right. So at this point, we've got uh, more than a year of precedent uh, that if a regulatory restriction specifically hurt your business, you should be compensated for it. Uh, you know, restaurants don't give the government 10 percent of their business in exchange for the relief. Uh, I mean, we have sort of at this point <laughs> established a precedent. Uh, so, right, if we're hoping that the industry will survive, if we're hoping that in the future there will be Canadian airlines at all, uh, then really at this stage, you know, the restriction, there, there are almost no industries that have been hit as hard by government restrictions. Uh, there were mm -hmm. spokespeople who have raised the point, uh, you know, there are a series of restrictions on airlines that were not 
imposing on other industries. So for example, when you get on an airplane, you have to get a special series of tests or you know you have different restrictions. You don't have those for a restaurant or you know for other closed environments. There's really kind of a special category of, of restrictions on airlines. Now those may be absolutely justified. We're not questioning that. But the point is that airlines are getting really savagely hit by the restrictions. And if they're to survive into the future, they're going to need some help. We're going to leave it there. Uh, Peter, it's great to have you with us for this. Appreciate it. Peter St. Ange is a senior fellow at the Montreal Economic